return to Birch's Brook to remove the things that I couldn't remove last time because I was too tired. I've got help with me this time. My brother Michael has come along and we've just, I've totally forgot to record it, but we've just removed the big branch that was lying along there. I can't move this, it's too big. Um, but I think it'll be fine. This won't be in the way. So that's now nice and clear. I've gone and dropped down the other side of the culvert. This is this is that block side. I've walked down where it's all dried up. It's like full of flies. And there's a snail there. But this is where that culvert comes out on the other side. Travel down here to the River Ambrose, like just around the corner. Not been down here before, so I'm not sure what to expect or what to see. Dragonfly! Oh, there's a big fallen tree down there. Hopefully it's too hot for the mozzies today. I have no idea what their preferred heat is. But it's 29 degrees today. So, oh, oh, another dragonfly. So hopefully they're not into 29 degrees. It's a good day to be by the river, that's for sure. Gravel bar down there. Very nice. Oh, it all looks a bit deep here as well. Nice. All right. I think this is this is probably a good space where fish might be. Do I? Don't I? I think I might have a little look. I'm very respectful. Oh look, netting. See, will it was worth. coming for a nosy and I'm litter picking. Oh. oh no, that's a piece of that pottery that you find everywhere. Yeah, look, so the, the channel here for this brook has been made too wide. So, and it's straight, like it's straight down. So, I was explaining to Michael what happens is the um, the river almost narrows itself so you can see it's made its own little meander here um, so it's got more energy because if it, if it tried to fill this actual space it's not got enough energy to, to travel. Um, probably be walking through a puddle if it filled it all. So, um, So it makes its own, its own meanders within the channel. Hey, look at this. Oh, that's good, isn't it, down there? Oh, that's very interesting. I've left Michael guard in the bag, so I totally didn't mean to come this far. I mean, it's not far, really. It's just because you're taking it steady. Look, this is fabulous. This is absolutely fabulous. I thought I saw something going to the riverbank. Let's go over here. Look at this. Oh, look, more rubble bags. 
is what I was on about in my last video. That they, oh god, it's all got so stuck under there. Oh no. You just can't leave it, can you? Like, oh look, that's a bottle. That's a full bottle. Oh, there we go. It's plugged up by mud. I might have to come back for that. I'm not going to go any further because I've left Michael behind. So, I'm going to head back. Looks like there's some jelly ear. Is it jelly ear mushrooms growing on that branch? That's great. Alright, let's head back. So now we're going to make our way upstream and try and tackle that big cement block that's under the bridge. How did this get here? What's that on? There we go, we've just moved that massive concrete block. So the river's got a bit more flow now. Right, last time I was here, I was talking about this log here and whether it might create a pool for fish or not. So I've done a bit more research and I'm just about to explain to Michael my reasonings for moving it. So I thought I'd record it and then and everyone knows my reasoning. So, this is not a natural river, it's been straightened, but the river is trying to correct itself with its meanders. So the river's coming along here, and then it's, it, this is, would be where it would be erosion, ero, eroding the bank. So you see it's going round, you've got the deposition there. So this is where it would bend round, and it's in the deep erosion sections where pools form for fish and that's what we're trying to encourage. So with this stuff in the way, I'm thinking that that erosion is slowed down, which doesn't matter because there's a wall back there and wall there, so it's not gonna erode the bank as such. Um, so I think we need to move this stuff so that that can be made deeper for the fish. What do you reckon? Yep. Okay.
right, I think we're done. We moved the massive log, moved all the little bits of debris and the branches that were still attached. That was quite difficult. Um, and then what I've done here is obviously I've tried to um, put this stone here to try and slow down any fast flowing drainage water from the street so it doesn't disrupt the fish as much when it enters the stream. And uh, hopefully that'll work, but it will need some monitoring. Obviously, don't want to cause any damage to the pool bit either. So, um, yeah, I think looking a bit different from when we arrived. Just making our way back, and we just saw a fish swim underneath the gabion. So, I'm just waiting for the water to settle because we've dis disturbed it all. Let's see if we can get a little look. I just saw something swimming past or floating past, and it's this half eaten fish. I've never touched a fish before and I have no idea what kind of fish this is, this is. but we do have kingfishers flying up and down uh, this area so it might be, might be the work of a kingfisher. I'm going to just ew, let it do its thing. Let's see if we can see any fish. I definitely saw one swimming there, it wasn't a dead one. definitely a live one they're swimming about but I'm taking that the dead fish is a good sign um, and that there are other fish in the area. We've climbed out successfully I'm really pleased that we got those remaining bits done and obviously now having seen the fish it's all the more important that we got rid of that barrier that was there that little dam of sticks and um, that was in my last lid video um, so we're going to go on now, I'm going to go and show Michael Mega Dam. <laughs> 